How's it going, everybody? In this video, we're going to take a look at our next Palo Alto topic, which is going to be virtual routers. Now, for those of you that have come from the iOS router background, you should be, if you're not already familiar with the concept of virtual routing and forwarding tables, or VRFs, then not that big of a deal, but in Palo Alto, same concept applies, where you have a virtual router. Basically, it allows you to take a Palo Alto firewall and carve it up into multiple virtual routing tables. So ASA does this with the concept of multiple context mode. I don't, I believe Fortinet does this with what they call VDOMs, but don't quote me on that, not an expert on Fortinet. But virtual routers basically allow you to create different routing tables for different customers. And from what I understand, you're able to route between them. I have not tested that out yet, so don't quote me on those details. But the idea is when you create a there's a, a virtual router that exists by default called the default virtual router. And whenever you want to um, map an interface to or create an interface and you want it to be in the routing table of the firewall, it needs to be mapped to a virtual router. It isn't, doesn't get that by default. So because I did some testing, I didn't create one or I, I didn't map it and I did some testing and it wouldn't ping and I'm like, well, what the heck's going on? I did a little bit of digging. I'm like, oh, I didn't map the VR to it, map the VRF, boom, it started to work. So that's basically how that process comes into play. You can create your own virtual router if you want, or you can use the default. It's up to you and how you want to do that. I use the default because, well, because I can. Now, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can create your own and then roll with that. It's up to you and how you want to do that. Um, but that's pretty much that. There's multiple routing options available to it as well. If you want to dive into those details, you can. But basically, it's just a default, it's just another routing table. So if you use a default routing table, a default virtual router, I should say, on a PA firewall, it's no different than the default VRF in a Cisco router or the global routing table. If you want to create routing table or VRF A, then it's going to, you know, you just map interfaces to that VRF and voila, you're in good shape. So let's go ahead and go ahead and actually map some interfaces to this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just do the E1 slash 1 interface because we're we're playing with it right now just to show you what that looks like. If you go to network and you go to virtual routers here, you can create your own, right? So you can click on add, create a VR, name it whatever you'd like, you know, VR1 or whatever. And then all of your routing goes underneath that particular virtual router. And then you have your static routes and you have your redistribution profile. So for example, if you have a default route in the routing table and you want to bring it propagate that uh, via OSPF or RIP or BGP, you can do that as well. Those are options if you'd like to do that. We're going to be taking a look at the dynamic routing protocols a little bit down the road, but that's basically where, we're, where we are. So let's go ahead and on the interfaces tab, we're going to go to Ethernet 1 slash 1. And on the this page right here, it says um, config assign interface to virtual right now virtual router is none right so we can hit the drop down and go to default or you can come in here and create a new virtual router if you want to do that and go from there so that's pretty much that we're going to click on ok and then you will see that over here on the right hand side that we are now in the virtual router of default now if you want to go ahead and do any routing underneath the virtual router there's a couple different ways that you can go do this like if I want to go in here and create a static route. So I go click on here and I create a static route. I click on add. I create the static route and variables that I want to have, right? Everything's good to go there. Well, I get all of that stuff done and then I go ahead and I apply it and click on cancel here. If you want to know more about what's there, you know, if you don't want to be connected to the CLI, you can click on more runtime stats and it's actually going to show you what the routing table looks like. Nothing's going to show up right now because none of the interfaces on the device are configured. That's where we're going to take a look in the next video. That one's going to take a little bit because we're taking what we learned about in zones and in virtual routers and mapping it in that video. So that's basically where that comes into play. So in a nutshell, that's basically virtual routers and how they work. There's more to it than that, but for just the, uh, in a basic introductory, introductory basics that's what you need to know. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.